And happy Tuesday. This is Kurt Bergland with another Tuesday edition of the unboxing or a demo or what has Kurt learned this week on YouTube for you? Today we have a demo of an unboxing that we did last week. The game is called Everyday Player Baseball and the teams that I'll be using for this demo are from 1965. They are the 1965 New York Yankees uh, at the 1965 Cleveland Indians. What I'm going to do is to show you how the game works along with a few innings of a game between these two teams. And then next week, on my demo, we'll do a full game uh, and show you the whole thing in action. But today we're going to go through the parts, uh, how to play the game, and do a couple innings so you can see uh, kind of how it works. And then next week, we'll do a full nine-inning contest. All right, so to play everyday player baseball, let's get to the parts. When you play everyday player baseball, you get a sheet that looks something like this one. Oh, the, the season sheets do vary a little bit. You get the year, the season, the record of the team, but then you also get a layout of the position players as well as the pitchers that are available to you. Now, you need three dice for the game. You need a red die and two white dice, and we have those right there. And what's going to happen is... The, um, the two white dice are going to be um, uh, combined for to determine pitch selection. And then the red die will determine a column. But what happens then? Well, what you'll see here is that, uh, and I'll, I'll bring this up a little bit here, we'll focus on Fred Whitfield, Cleveland first baseman. You get the data of how many games he played at first base. Get his name, the asterisk indicates that he is a left-handed hitter. If the player uh, is a switch hitter, they get a hashtag um, symbol after their name. And if they're a right-handed batter, they get nothing. Uh, this is the batter's uh, average rating this is the power rating, and then this is for extra stuff. Um, could be a strikeout uh, or a walk or some other kind of a modifier that would be a tendency of the hitter. The run uh, category for the batter could be could go a number of ways, but basically for Whitfield, one is subtracted from his stealing, which becomes which comes before the slash, and one is subtracted from uh, base running, which comes after the slash. There's his fielding, and there's his bunt rating. Now you wouldn't have to have a um, a an exact number here, minus one and minus one. They could vary. So Hinton, for example, Chuck Hinton gets a plus one to his stealing and a plus two to his base running. So these numbers don't have to be the same. Then what you'll see is that there is a fielding rating and this varies per position for each player. And then whether they are an average bunter or a good bunter or a poor bunter is rated as well. For the pitchers, what you'll see is they get a grade for their pitching based on earned run average. That's their defensive rating. Then they get hitting ratings as well, defense, or running, fielding, and bunting rating as well. Hitter, pitchers are separated by starting pitchers, which are for Cleveland are in this column, and relievers, which for Cleveland are there. Okay, so let's get to a sample, and you can kind of see how this will work 
in practice. These are the charts. So what you'll see up here is that there are <clears throat> six kinds of pitches. It could be a two-seam fastball, a cutter, a slider, a, a four-seam fastball, a curveball, or a changeup. First thing you're going to do is to roll these two D6s and add them together. So what we're going to do is to, is to uh, we'll do a sample first, but um, we'll roll these two D6s and we get two plus one is three, and that means it's a cutter. So we look on the cutter chart, and we need this. We need the uh, red D6, and the red D6 um, will tell us which of the two charts, uh, or which of the two columns. So if it's a one, two, or three, we use this cutter column chart, and if it's a four, five, or six, we use this one. So it's a two, so we use the left chart. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, we re-roll the two D6s. All right, so let's do that one more time. We're gonna roll all three of these at the same time, so you can see. And we get a red five, a four, and a one. So what that means is we add the two whites and we get a five, and we get a five on the red die, which means the right column because it's a four, five, or six. Now we re-roll and see what the number is going to be. We read the low number first, which in this case is a four and then the high number. So it's a 46, but we're in the right column. So here's the 46. Because we remember that it's a five, we look at a grass cutter, FC4. All right, this takes us to the um, this takes us to the fielding chart, and we'll do that right now. All right. So this is the fielding chart. We know that because it says fielding chart, and then. We look at the grass cutter, FC4, all right? So this tells us we're looking at the fourth chart. FC4 is the fourth fielding chart. One, two, three, four. And then we re-roll. And we get a, reading the low one first, we get a 34, which says it's under the fielder's glove, base hit, runner at first stops at second, plus one or plus two, Runner goes from first to third, and everybody else scores. All right, so if everything was generic, that would be a way to look at the rolls. Do another one here. Suppose that we were on the cutter and we were in the left column, and we get a connects result. Well, there is a connects chart. Every player is rated uh, for their power ability. U is the weakest. Double Z is the uh, most impressive power. So weakest to strongest power. If a connects result is gotten from a pitch, then we re-roll find the hitter's letter power rating, and then look down the column. All of this, however, can be adjusted. All of this can be adjusted. And we're going to, I'm sorry, the power can't be, but the hitting rating can be. The power doesn't get adjusted, but the hitting rating can be. And then you get the uh, strategy cards. All right, so let's do some hitters and try this out so you can see it in practice. All right, so the first thing 
we have to be aware of. So I have filled out the lineup card, and we're saying that Cleveland is at home. The pitcher for Cleveland is one of my favorites, Louis Tiant. He is a five. All right, and then you, as you fill out your card, and I waited to do this so that you could see how this is done, we have a score sheet here, and these are nice score sheets, by the way, um, that allow you to fill in the data that you have for each player so that all of your stuff could be on the score sheet. You, you wouldn't necessarily, unless you were going to the bench or the bullpen, you wouldn't need to have this handy until later in the game. If you wanted, you could have all of your game uh, data right here on the score sheet. There's columns for that. All right, so let's suppose that Tom Tresh was at bat against Louis Tian. Now, Tresh is... Um, batting rating is a 6Y... Now the Y tells us what we do if he connects. This is his connects column. So that's the purpose of the Y. The six is for his average. And we match that up against the pitcher he's facing. So Tiant is a five, Tresh is a six. Now if you remember, Tom Tresh, of course, he was a switch hitter. And so what that means is that as we compare these two, um, the fact that Tresh is a switch hitter gives him a platoon advantage. All right, so uh, the effect of this means that Tresh is a plus one, and then he gets another one because he has the platoon advantage. So he gets plus one because six is one more than five, and then he gets one more uh because he is, he has the platoon advantage over Tiant being a switch hitter, in this case, a left-handed batter. So Tresh will get a plus two bonus to all of his rolls. How does that work? All right, so we're going back here and we're gonna roll all three dice and figure out what pitch has been delivered by Tiant. All right, so here we go. It's a 5-5, five, five, which is a cutter. It's a 5, so it's in the second column. Now, Tresh is a plus 2. We figured that out. He's a 6 compared to Tiant's 5, plus he has the platoon advantage. So he gets a 2-roll bonus. All right, so we roll this. It's a 14. 14 puts him here in the second column, but he gets a plus 2 bonus. So he drops down to a 16 here. And because he is a left-hander, we read this part, which I don't know if you can see, so I'm gonna raise it up here. It says a bouncer to first base FC1, because he's a left-handed batter. Bouncer to first base FC1, all right. So what that means is we're looking at the fielding chart. We're looking at the FC1 bouncer. Now the first baseman for the Indians is Fred Whitfield. Fred Whitfield's uh, rating is a zero. So it's not affected by this. So we roll with a zero. So there's no change to the roll. It's a 36 with no change. And and he's out because 
the error chances are on 11 or 12. And the infield's not in, so that wouldn't apply either. So it's a ground out to Whitfield, and Tresh is retired. Kubek is up now, Tony Kubek. Tony Kubek's rating on his team chart tells us he is a 4W. 4W. So we are comparing him to Tiant. And in comparing him to Tiant, Tiant, of course, is a 5. Kubek is a left handed batter. So that means that the roll is not adjusted. He goes from a minus one for Kubek to a zero because of his platoon advantage over Tiant. Now we take the three dice, we roll again. And it's a three, which is a cutter again. And it's a connects result. So we're in the first one, two, or three puts us in the left column with the red die. And we get a 66. Now that is a connects result. You do not adjust for a result on a 66 or on an 11 with the batter's result. Doesn't really matter because it's a zero right now. But in another instance, it might matter. You can't adjust the 66 or the 11 upward or downward. It's just a connects. In this case, a 66. All right, so now we look at the connects chart. Now the connects chart column for Kubek is a W. He is a four W hitter. So now we, we never adjust these rolls. They are what they are. So we have a 33 on a W. And it tells us it is a line single to center field. Runner on first goes to second. Any plus runner goes from first to third and others score. So it's a single for Quebec. We have one out and one on. And now it'll be Roger Maris. Roger Maris, I am playing today in right field. He had an injury plagued 65. He had 42 games. He is a 4YB. 4YB hitter. He also, of course, as a left-handed batter, has the platoon advantage over uh, Tiant. Um, all right, so as a four with the platoon advantage, uh, boom, bumps him to a five, so he's a zero adjustment to the roll against Tiant. Kubek's on first. The pitch is a, another cutter. It's a two plus one is a three. Five puts us in the left column. Now we re-roll, or in the right column. We re-roll, it's a 24. There's no adjustment. It's a looper to left field, FC three. All right. So the left fielder for the Indians is our old friend Leon Wagner Daddy Wags. He is a zero fielder. Okay. So, as an FC looper, FC3 looper, we re roll and look here, no adjustment because Wagner is a zero. And we roll a 23, low number first, of course. Fielder is on his horse, ball drops in, base hit. Zero or one out, we have one out, and runners advance one base. So it's a single for Maris. Kubek stops at second, and now next runner, next batter comes up. All right, so our pitching charts are ready. The next batter up is Mickey Mantle, who I'm playing in left field today. 107 games in 65 for Mickey in left. He is a 5YB hitter. He has the platoon advantage over Tiant. So he bumps up to a 6, which means he is a plus 1 to the roll. A plus 1 to the roll for Mickey. 2 on, 1 out. And the pitch is a five, so it's a cutter again. And a six, so we're in the right column. We re-roll for Mickey. 
It's a 23, but, 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 we add one, because Mickey's a plus one in this case. It's a looper to left field, FC3 again. So, it's a challenge for Leon Wagner, who we remember, we remember is a zero. And here he comes. 24, fielder's on his horse, ball drops in, runners advance one base. So now the bases are loaded with Yankees, Kubek at third, Maris at second, and Mantle at first, and it's going to be Elston Howard coming to the plate. Elston Howard. In 1965, I'm playing him at catcher. 95 games for Elston at catcher. He is a 4W hitter, no other modifiers. He does not have the... Um, Platoon advantage against Tiant. So he goes down to a three, so he's a minus two to the roll. He's a minus two to the roll. He started out as a four, but he's a righty hitter. Tiant's a righty pitcher, so it's minus one. So he's goes down from a four to a three compared to Tiant, makes him minus two. Bases loaded, one out. We'll have the infield playing normal, and the pitch is an eight. All right, so... We look at the changeup, because we add these two together. Four plus four makes eight. Two puts us in the left column. We re-roll, and it's a 13. He strikes out swinging. And so Howard strikes out. Two gone in the Yankee first. Base is still loaded. And it's gonna be Joe Pepitone. No, no sign of his hair dryer anywhere. So he is a the Yankee first baseman today, 115 games for Joe at first. He is a 5X hitter. No other modifiers. So he's a 5 against Tion's 5, but we see that Pepitone has an asterisk, which means he's a left-handed batter. So he bumps to a 6 because he has the platoon advantage, which means that he we add 1 to the roll, 6 being... Pepitone's six being higher than Tiant's five. So it's a plus one to the roll. Here we go with the bat bit to Pepitone. And it's a four, seven. I'm sorry. 425, sorry. So it's a slider. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Deep breath. Here we go. Two plus five is seven. So it's a four seam fastball. Four seam fastball. It's a four, four, five, or six go in the right column. And now we re-roll. 25 is a pop out to third base, but Pepitone's a plus one. So we go down here, pop out to catcher if he has a K modifier, it's a strikeout. It's dark, so I'll show you this a little bit closer. It's a pop-out to third, but Pepitone's a plus one, so it's a pop-out to the catcher. If he had a K modifier, it would be a strikeout, but he doesn't. So it's an F2, and the Indians are out of the inning. Yankees leave the bases dripping. All right, bottom of the first coming. Now we're ready with the Indians chart. Mel Stottlemyre is on the mound for New York. Stottlemyre is a seven pitcher. Now, where did I get that from? Well, I got that from Mel's grade right here. 37 starts for Mel, and he's a seven. So that's going to be our number to subtract or add to, or add, subtract from to get our numbers for the Indians. It'll be a seven for Stottlemyre, and of course he was a right-handed pitcher. Leading off for the Indians is Vic D'Avalio, the center fielder. He is a six V with a C modifier. So Vic is at a minus one right away, but he's got the platoon advantage with the asterisk. So he bumps to a seven, and that makes him a zero to the roll. 
So we have no additions or subtractions to the roll. Sottlemyer's pitch to Vic Davilio looks like this. It's a two plus one is a three, that's a cutter. And a one puts it in the left column. Here, we know that Davilio is a zero now, so we are not adjusting the roll and it's a 15. It's a bouncer to the pitcher, FC1. All right, so we look at our very first fielding chart and it's an FC1 bouncer. We're gonna roll our two dice and that's a 14. No error and the play is made to first base. It's a one to three put up. All right, next is Max Alvis. Max Alvis was the third baseman for Cleveland in 65. He had 156 games at third. Uh, he is a 5X batter, no other modifiers. So compared to Stottlemyre, he is a... He starts out at a minus 2 because Stottlemyre is a 7. Minus 2. But Alvis is a right-handed batter, so it's, it drops to minus 3. So we're going to subtract 3 from the rolls for Max. All right. Now we rolled a 7. Now a 7 is a four-seam fastball. And I rolled a 3 on the red die, so we are in the left column. We re-roll here. It's a 46, and it's a Canex. A Canex for Max Alvis. All right. So we pull out our Canex chart. Remember, we don't modify the Canex letter grades or rolls. And it's a 23. Lined into left field, base hit. So a single for Alvis on the connects chart. One out, one on for Cleveland in the bottom of the first. And now it'll be Leon Wagner, Daddy Wags coming up. Leon Wagner is a, or was a left-handed batter. 134 games for Leon. He is a 6YC hitter, 6YC. So he is minus one against Stottlemyre, but he's got the platoon advantage, so he bumps to a seven, so he turns out to be a zero. We'll make no adjustments to the rolls for Leon. And here's the pitch. It's a five, which means it's a cutter. I rolled a three, which puts us in the left column. And now we re-roll. 25. Batter hit by pitch. He dotted him. Two on, one out. And now it's going to be Cleveland cleanup hitter Rocky Calavito. 162 games for the Rock and 65. How can you not love this guy? 6Y batting with a C modifier. But he's a right-handed hitter. So... He drops to a five against Stottlemyre, so it's a minus two to the Rocks rolls. Two batters on, and we're subtracting two from Calavito's rolls. There's one man out. It's a five, so it's a cutter. We're in the right column. We re-roll, 55, grass cutter, for a right-handed batter between third base and shortstop. FC4. Alrighty. So, we look at the grass cutter chart for FC4. If a right-handed batter is up... It goes to the third baseman. It's a chance for the third baseman. So we look at his defense. Well, the third baseman in 1965 for the Yankees was Cleet Boyer. He is a fielding zero. So we don't adjust the rolls. We just roll. And it's a 15. 
Fielder hustling over through the hole. Base hit. All right. Now, we have to look at the running ratings, which we haven't had a chance to do yet. It says zero plus one or plus two runner advances two bases. Well, we're looking first at Max Alvis. Because Max Alvis is on second, Leon Wagner's on first, and this went through the hole into left field. So Max Alvis running is a zero. We don't... We, he's, he's, we're looking before... Uh, I'm sorry, after the slash. Stealing is first. Running is second after the slash. So he's a zero. And it tells us a zero plus one or plus two runner advances two bases. Well, that means Max Alvis is going to score on this single by the rock. But now what happens to Leon Wagner? He started at first base. Well, his running is a plus two on the bases. Not for stealing, but for base running, he's a plus two. Well, he also advances two bases. So Daddy Wags goes to third, and there's Indians at first and third now. With one out, and there's one man in, one man home. That's Max Alvis, so it's one nothing Cleveland. Stottlemyre still has a big jam on his hands, though, because there's only one out, and hard-hitting Fred Whitfield is coming to the plate. Cleveland first baseman. All right, so... Getting a little bit organized here. Okay. Okay, so at bat is Whitfield. Let's look at Fred Whitfield's numbers. 122 games for Fred. He is a left-handed batter because the asterisk tells us so. He is a 6Y rating with a C. 6YC rating. Stottlemyre, we know, is a 7, but Whitfield, as a left-handed batter, has the platoon advantage, which bumps him to a 7, so he's at a 0 adjustment to the roll. And here we go with our pitch. It's a 7, so it's a 4-seam fastball, and a 6 puts it in the right column. Forty-five. Fly out to right field with two asterisks. Fly out to right field. I'm going to raise this up here so you can see this. I don't know if you can see this very well. Fly out to right field with two asterisks. Now, at the bottom of the chart, it says two asterisks with one or a third. Use tag chart. Use the tag chart. Now you're saying to yourself, wait a minute. Kurt, what in the love of God is a tag chart? Well, that's what I've got the answers for. All right, so at third base is Leon Daddy Wags Wagner. His runner rating, we've already learned, is a plus two. Now the flyout is to right field. The right fielder for the New York Yankees in this game is Roger Maris. Roger Maris is... Uh, fielding is a zero. Fielding column, Roger Maris, zero. All right, so we come back here. Daddy Wags is a plus two. Maris is a zero. All right. Now, Defense has the option, so Daddy Wags will be safe on a roll of 11 to 56. Defense has the option of throwing home. If we throw home, a plus runner on second base takes third base. Well, there's no runner on second. Calavito's on first, so there's no danger of... Calavito moving up, so we're going to roll it, and it's a 15, which means that it's a sacrifice fly to Maris, and it scores Wagner 
because we're between 11 and 56 with our result. And it's two to nothing Indians. So there's now two outs in the first. Calavito holds at first. And the batter will be Joe Azkew, the catcher. Joe Azkew, 108 games. He is a 4V hitter. 4V. And he's up there as a right-handed batter against Stottlemyre, who's a 7. So a 7 minus 4 is a minus 3. Plus, 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 Stottlemyre has the platoon advantage. So it's a minus 4 to the roll for Azkew. So here we go. It's a 3 plus 6 is a 9. And the 6 puts us in the right column. So the 9 is the two-seam fastball. Two-seam fastball because of the 9 roll. We're in the right column. Now we re-roll with a minus 4 to the roll because of Azkew. It's a 36, but, 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 we subtract 4. So he goes down to a 33, 35, 34, 33, 26. Subtract 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So because we're dealing with 2D6s, we have to move up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's a fly out to left field. Could be a sacrifice fly, except it's the third out of the inning. And that ends the first inning for the Indians. They score two. So the Yankees fail to score in their first. The Indians score two in the bottom of the first. All right, so we're back out for inning number two. Boyer, Richardson, and Stottlemyre are due for the Yankees in the top of the second. Boyer, 147 games for Cleet. He is a 5X. Five and five for Tiant subtracts Boyer down to a four, so he's a minus one because Cleet was a right-handed batter and Louis got the platoon advantage. So Boyer's a 5X with no other modifiers. Pitch to Cleet is an 8-1. So that puts us in the change-up chart because it's an eight. A one puts us in the left column. The roll for Cleet is a 13, minus one, bumps him to a 12. Strike three, swinging, one gone for boy over here for the Yankees in the top of the second. Now it's Richardson. Bobby Richardson, 158 games, a 5VC, which means, of course, he was a member of the Viet Cong. No, that's not true. All right, so a five against Tiant's five so means that, and he's a right-handed batter, so we subtract one. So Bobby's a minus one against Tiant. All right, so one plus two is a three. A four puts us a four on the red die puts us in the right column here. So we re-roll. This is for Bobby Richardson. 23, and then we're going to subtract 1 because he's a minus 1, so it's a fly out to left field. 2 gone now, and now it's Stottlemyre. Mel is a 2WK pitcher. Batter, sorry, batter. 2WK, right-handed batter. So he becomes a 1WK. So it's a minus four roll for Stottlemyre against Tiant. Make sure you can see these. Okay, there we go. All right, it's an 11. Two seam fastball of four puts us in the right column. We re roll. Here's our column. 16 minus 4 moves us to a 12, so it's a called strike 3. So you make one of those backwards Ks, and Mel is gone. That ends the Yankee second inning. 
Now we'll do the Cleveland second, and then that will be it for this demo. There's a few things we haven't shown, but we're going to get to all of that next Tuesday when we do a full game demo. Uh, and it's the 7-8-9 hitters for the Indians coming up, too. It's Pedro Gonzalez, their second baseman. He's a 5-W, no other modifiers. 112 games for Pedro. Uh, Solomire's a 7, and he's got the platoon advantage, so Pedro drops to a 4. So Pedro is minus 3 rolls against Solomire. 6-6. Six, six. All right, so it's a curveball column, and it's a red 6, so we're in the right side. And it's a 34. And that's a walk. So Pedro's on. But that's kind of good because it gives me an opportunity to show you how bunting works. So the batter for the Indians is going to be Larry Brown, who I'm playing at shortstop. The Indians had Larry Brown and Dick Hauser at shortstop in 65. Larry Brown is a 5W batter, but I'm going to use his bunting here. He's a plus two bunter. And we're going to sacrifice, or try to sacrifice, Pedro to uh, second base. So the pitch will go like this. This die will tell us which column to look at. If it's a 1 or 2, it's a fastball. If it's a 3 through 6, it's a curve or a changeup. So it's a curve or changeup. Now we roll the 2d10s. We get a 16. But we add 2 because Brown is a plus 2 bunter. So it gets us to 23, but it's still in the rolls foul category. So this is strike 2. If the batter bunts foul again, the batter's out on strikes. Well, we're going to do it again. Why? Because I'm just that kind of a leader. All right, here we go. Three is another curve change-up outcome. Brown, still a plus two bunter. And a 13 bumps him to a 15, and he strikes out. So Larry goes down on strikes trying to bunt. All right. Next up, Louis Tiant. Louis Tiant's batting is a 1WK. But remember, Stottlemyre, a right-handed pitcher. So Louie drops down to a zero, so we're at a minus seven K for Louie against Mel. It's a four and a two, so we're in the left column. The four means it's a slider, and the two puts us here. 26 is a walk if it was an N, which he's not, it would be a foul ball, but he walked him. He walked Tian, so there's two on now. Two walks on the inning with one out. And the top of the order, it's going to be Vic Davalio batting for Cleveland. Vic was the leadoff hitter. Of course, he is a 6VC, which means, of course, he's a member of the Viet Cong. It's 1965, after all, people. No, that's not true. He was not a... Don't tell people Vic Davalio was a member of the Viet Cong. <laughs> but it is kind of funny. Uh, so Davalio is a left-handed batter. Sotomayor is a 7. So that bumps Vic to a 7. So the adjustment is a 0. Even if he is a member of the VC. And we have a 4-seam fastball. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 2 puts us in the left column. 56 connects. Connects. What does that mean for Vic Davalio? Well, Vic Davalio's connect letter is a V. So we look here. And it's a 56. He's a left-handed batter, long blast to deep right field, FC9 right field. 
All right, so Vic got a hold of it. All right, so now we look at Long Blast, which we have not done yet, so this is exciting. FC9, Long Blast to deep right field. So Roger Maris is on his horse. All right, so. 56. On the FC9, Long Blast to deep right field. We come down here. Great leaping catch, batter is out. All runners tag up and advance one base. So Maris leaps for it and catches it. Gonzalez tags up and goes from second to third. And Louis Tiant, in a maneuver I wish I would have seen, tags up from first base and advances to second base on the flyout. So there's Indians at second and third now. And it's Max Alvis who singled back in the first inning. Max, with two outs here, is a 5X batter, no other modifiers. Stottlemyre's a 7 and is a right-handed pitcher, so Max drops to a 4, which means we're doing a minus 3 to all of Max's rolls. Okay, so here we go. And the pitch to Max Alvis is a 12 and a 4. So we 6 plus 6 is 12, so that tells us we're in the change-up column. 4 puts us in the right column. And it's a 44, so it's minus 3 from 44. Go boom, boom, boom. Grass cutter between third and shortstop, because he's a right-handed batter. So we're going to test the third baseman's uh, defense. And we need our defense chart. And we need to know that Clay Boyer is a zero. Remember, we learned that before. So we're not adjusting Boyer's, the role for Boyer. Here's our grass cutter box, 12. Fielder hustling over through the whole base hit. It's past Boyer. All right, now, we know we got a single. We know Gonzalez scores from third, but what happens to Louis Tiant? Well, we have to check. Louis Tiant's on second. We got to check Louis' base running, which I got a pretty good feeling I know what that is. Uh, yeah, minus two to Louis' base running. Not a speedster. Okay, so if runner is a minus one or minus two, advances one base. So Louis only staggers to third base on the grass cutter that gets through past Boyer into left field. So now it's Indians at the corners. Gonzalez scores from third. It's 3 nothing Cleveland. And it's Leon Daddy Wags Wagner coming to the plate. Daddy Wags, of course, a left-handed batter. 6Y compared to Sottlemyre gets the bump to 7 because he's a left-handed batter. So he gets a zero adjustment. 6YC. All right. So we'll see if Leon can come through with the two-out hit. And it's a 9, which puts us at the two-seam fastball. And a 3 on the red die, which puts us in the left column. 22. And we have a zero, no adjustment to the roll, is a fly out to left field, and that will end the inning. All right, so after two complete, Indians three, Yankees nothing. A couple of things I wanna show you before we depart for today. And again, we're doing a nine inning demo next week if you wanna see how everything works. But you've seen an awful lot of it here. We have not done a hit and run. We have not done any stealing of bases, but we'll do that next week. And uh, we just did with the one bunt, but you get a sense of it here. You roll the difference on the pitch, and then you look down the column.
Okay, so this is your first demo of Everyday Player Baseball. You've seen the charts. You've seen pretty much everything except for these strategy pieces that we haven't done. But everything else you've seen in action. Next week, a full nine-inning game. Thank you for joining me. My name's Kurt Berglund. Please subscribe to my channel. I need your subscriptions. Share the video. Show other people Everyday Player Baseball. I'm going to put the link for the website below this video in the description so you can take a look and see what's there. Thank you again for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you uh, next Tuesday for the full nine-inning demo. Tomorrow... There is more Pine Tar Baseball 1972 tournament for you to check out on my channel. So make sure to do that. Thank you so much. Have a good day. So long, everybody.